What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're back in the Crown and we're covering so we're covering the features of the Crown. I've done a hidden features video for you guys, which you guys really liked. Um, but this is like the features that you actually use. Now I could sit here and go through a list of every single feature on the car, but this isn't Top Gear and this isn't, you know, Cars Guide. If you want to find every single exact feature, you know, you can read the list. What I want to tell you guys is every feature that you actually use, the features you want, the features you use, um, in your, like your day-to-day, -day, things that you use, your passengers use, that kind of thing. Because a lot of the time there's a bunch of features on cars that you never actually use. Um, there's a bunch that I haven't, I will touch on, uh, just because they are cool features and some people may want to use them. But yeah, I thought I would just kind of go from the front of the car to the back of the car and show you guys every feature that you want, every one that you use. So without further ado, let's jump on in and talk about some features. All right, starting off first feature, front of the car, headlights. So you've got the automatic headlights and by automatic headlights, oh, uh, disclaimer, this is on the UZS186 top model. So it's the type, uh, is it the type F? C-Type, something like that. I don't know, sorry, I get confused with some of the crowns because some are Type F, some are F package, some are Type, type C, blah, blah, blah. This is the top one you can get in the UZS 186. So yeah, the headlights are automatic headlights. And by automatic, I don't mean they just turn on automatically when you select the auto switch. I mean they actually like turn for you. So if you turn right, they aim right. If you turn left, they aim left, which is quite helpful at night. Um, when you're going around like really, really dark areas uh, where I live, it can get a little bit dark. I'm kind of like on, Oh, you could say the edge of civilization. Um, like I'm not in regional, but I'm, I'm pretty far out. I'm not like CBD. So when it is dark and you haven't got street lights or something, that's really good, you know, for your little creatures and stuff like that that are jumping out the road. You can kind of get a bit of a, you know, preemptive strike on seeing them before they do jump out in front of you. That was the biggest pothole. Um, all right, so that's the headlights. Obviously they're auto as well. Um, now coming back, Let's hit the suspension straight away. So it's got adaptive suspension. Even if you don't have the ASC 680 like I do in this one to change your height, you do have normal and high setting. So if you were to go somewhere and you wanted to get even higher up, you can go to the high setting. Um, but if you haven't got any SS kits or you're not running a little bit lower, they're quite high anyway. But it is nice for that that, that sets up. You know, a little bit higher if it's some, some crazy gradient you're going to at a friend's house or whatever. It's nice that you have that option. Also, it's adaptive per corner. So there's a big confusion between the guys that have the ASC 680s. There's a menu on there that you can actually see the heights that the car sits at on each corner. And they freak out because they're like, man, it's going all over the place when I'm driving. And it's like, yeah, it's adaptive, bruh. Like, so you have a height sensor in each corner and it's gonna show you the height it's at, but it's already got an aimed height it wants to be at but it will adapt to keep the car nice and level. So currently, right now, I'm driving on a little bit of a, a slant and up the hill. So if I was driving on this for ages, it would teeter up a little bit. More air in those bags, less air in these bags, so I'm nice and even. It will do that, so don't, don't leave it on that setting. Just like ignore that setting. You can only, only worry about that specific menu when you are in a situation that you're trying to like air up and you want to make sure that the car has aired up. Go, okay, cool, I'm up now, sweet, let's go. Change off that menu, stop looking at it, because it'll just freak you out. Um, obviously, you got like things like ABS and all that kind of jazz, but that's like normal features on other cars. So let's come back a little bit further, and this is where it gets busy. There's a lot of features kind of in this area. So I'll go kind of outside in. So initially, you got the mirrors. So your mirrors actually have this cool little feature. I think I touched on it in the um, feature, like hidden features one but they've got a demist on the actual mirror. So if you're early morning, they're all fogged up and you put your demister on, I would say that it's connected. I haven't actually tested if it's connected to your rear window. Whoa, that was a big pothole. Um, rear window demister or your front, uh, but it is a like a electrical membrane in there or element, sorry, in there that kind of heats up a little bit and gets rid of all the fog on your uh, side mirrors, which is a really, really nice feature. Uh, then coming in, 
your windscreen wipers. Now, they're not auto windscreen wipers, but they do actually slow down when you go to a set of traffic lights, which I think is kind of cool because you know when it's bucketing down and they're going absolutely crazy, but then you stop at a set of lights and it's not getting as, like your windscreen is not as wet because you're not obviously driving into the rain. Uh, they slow down a little bit and they just kind of have a bit of a break, which is nice because it's not just like going crazy in your face, which does get annoying. Uh, then also you've got your heads-up display on this model. I love the heads-up display. Some people turn it off. Some people like complain about it. Oh, it's in my way. I honestly, I don't understand how like an opaque digital reading of your speed could be in your way. Like it's in your way for a purpose so that you don't have to look down at your dash. You can just kind of keep cruising and you know you're not speeding. I love it. I think it's a really good feature. On these, they're not super, super bright and wearing polarized sunnies. Um, it actually does dull it quite a bit, but it, like, you can still see it. You can still make it out with polarized on. Um, but yeah, just a thing to remember. It does kind of do that. Uh, coming back a little bit more. Now, I'm going to get to a point that I get to the back of the car and I'm going to be like, oh, damn, I forgot about that. And I'll jump back to the front, okay? Coming back a little bit further, uh, you have lights with your sun visor mirrors, which is kind of cool. Uh, at night, if you got a, par a partner, passenger, or whatever, they're touching up their makeup, that's there, that's pretty good. Uh, you've also got your sunroof, obviously, always use that. And you've up here has the control for the air cleaner and air ionizer. Some people say that air ionizer isn't great for you. I don't see how the electrifying the air is gonna, one, do anything really, but I don't see how it's gonna make it bad for you, uh, or whatever. Coming back down, uh, you've got your GPS. As most of you guys know, only works in Japan and they haven't got a thing that you can just like update it for where you are, which is kind of annoying to be honest. Uh, I would like that, but you've got the Navi Plus system that you know they've come up with. I'm not sure how smooth that runs. Um, it is quite new. So once they get all the bugs fixed in that, I mean, it could be right now, but once it's nice and smooth, then I'll probably go for that to be fair, because I do like the kind of factory look, but I love having a Apple CarPlay kind of thing um, as well, because you definitely, definitely use that. Again, around here on this model, you have heated seats. You do not have cooled seats. So I did, I used to have an IS250 uh, Lexus, which had heated and cooled seats. Cooled seats are like a big luxury. They're really nice, but this doesn't have it. It's a little bit older than that car was. So yeah, this one just has heated seats, but damn, is it good. Like really cold mornings, jump in the car, turn the heater on and it's taken its while, but you've got the seat heater on already or you're toasty. It's great. I love it. It's a really good feature. Um, then like you've got your, you know, obviously your CDs. It's got like mini, mini disc player, but I mean, write in the comments if you've even got a mini disc, let alone, you know, so many, many, mini discs that you actually use them readily. Uh, Lighting is going to go terrible for a second. Sorry about that, but I'm going to continue. I will, I will push through. Uh, you've got all your steering wheel controls. You've got volume. You've got skipping tracks. Uh, side note: with the Bluetooth thing that I put in uh, the kit, that all still works. So if you're wondering if that works, yes, it does. How does that, you know, it, how compatible is it? Really compatible. It's great. Uh, I use it literally every day. The second I get in the car, that's connected. If I wasn't doing this video, I'd be listening to an audiobook or music through my phone every single time. It doesn't connect on the head unit uh, to tell you what the songs are and stuff. It just says track. So be aware of that. You're not gonna see that, but it still works. Uh, you also have your cruise control. It is not adaptive cruise control. Uh, I just wanna put that out there because the newer cars obviously have adaptive cruise control. I don't know if the Crowns do, I would assume they do. Boys, jump in the comments with the newer Crowns, let me know. Um, this isn't adaptive. So if you think it is and you just cruise and you're gonna hit the person in front of you, okay? So it is not adaptive, don't think it is. And I, I've done the disclaimer there, so if you hit someone, it's on you. Uh, what else we got? We got parking sensors. Now, I don't actually have parking sensors on here. Uh, oh, I have them, but I've turned them off because with my aftermarket body kit, we didn't, well, the previous owner didn't drill holes. And when I had the bumpers replaced, they asked, do you want to drill the holes for the sensors? And I was like, no, I already have my eyes. I have the windows, I have mirrors, and I have a reverse camera. I don't need sensors as well. I, I know where my car is, it's all good. And if I touch something, then I'll, well, do that, you know? Um, I'm not gonna touch wood, but yeah, this car does come with parking sensors. 
but mine just aren't in use. Coming back a little further, you've obviously got your power, your economy, and your snow mode. Snow mode, yeah, I don't know what it does. Probably like lowers the torque. Maybe it's like a low range kind of, I don't know, I have no idea. Honestly, I have no idea. I'm never gonna drive this in the snow, so I've never put it in snow mode, uh, and I don't really plan to. Uh, I could give it a test, but I'm not gonna do it right now, because I'm driving. Uh, we've also got traction control off. You've got your sunshade in the back, uh, which is pretty cool. I don't know if you guys can actually see into the back, but if you can, you'll see the sunshade going up right now, which is pretty cool. And then also, you can put it down again. It's an up and a down button. Choice, right? Yeah, I know, cool. So then you've also got your height, uh, super high or normal height, which is already super high, and then sports or normal mode. Sports and normal mode suspension, uh, I think it stiffens it a little bit, but to be honest, you're not gonna notice. It's not like a, a supercar where they, you know, you go into Corsa mode and it goes really crazy. It's nothing like that. Uh, I would assume sport mode. If you went sport mode and power mode, it's you're not gonna feel like you're in a Supra or something. You're gonna feel like it holds the gears a little bit longer and it probably, the suspension's a little stiffer because they are two different buttons. One is suspension related, one is power related. So I'd say just the dampening tightens up a smidge to make it a little bit nicer. I actually always run on sport mode purely because this car, the car is a bit of a boat. I'm not gonna lie to you. And I'm not gonna lie to you and pretend that it's like this super sports car. It's not, it's a big boaty, comfortable, luxury leather V8. Like it's big, it, it's, it's not a track car. Um, and I'm not gonna try and pretend that it's a track car. It's, you know, but if you can stiffen the suspension up a little bit by the touch of a button, yeah, I'm doing it. Like, why wouldn't I? Uh, then going further back a little bit, obviously you've got like auto windows. The cool thing about this is all windows are auto. Uh, like my missus car and the Supra and uh, what else? I think the Beamer as well. Um, the driver's door is auto, but everything else isn't. So as cool as that is to have an auto window, if you want both windows down, like that just became null and void because you've got to hold the windows down. You know what I mean? I think all power windows should be completely auto. Press it all the way down, it's all the way down. Pull it all the way up, comes all the way up. Car companies do that. It's way better. Like surely it's not that expensive to do it. I mean, don't make us retrofit it. I'm gonna retrofit it into the Supra because I got two windows, one's auto, one's not. Come on, really? So I like that feature, I think that's really great. Um, just for the fact of exactly what I just explained. Like if you're putting the windows down, you've got the option to put it down a little bit even on full auto. Okay, I'm getting too far into windows. It clearly, clearly triggers me with uh, non-auto windows, but I digress, let's move on. Coming back a little bit further, um, you have obviously your cubby in the middle. You've got, um, so you've got a cigarette lighter in front of you, AKA a power outlet. And you've actually also got one in here, which is great. Um, you have, what do you got? One, two trays. Now, my trays are both like manual, okay? And by manual, I mean that like, they don't move unless I move them, right? But I have seen in other ones that they're sprung. So like you push it and it pokes forward, like a, um, like a cup holder kind of thing. You know, you push it in and it comes out. So I think mine's missing the spring. Um, not a big deal, doesn't, doesn't break my heart, but that's pretty cool. Cause the top one, you can't actually see it, but when you lift it, like when you slide the thing back, when you slide the actual armrest back, it's in a bit. So if you just push that and it popped it out in front of your other one, that'd be pretty cool. I like that. I might get that spring, but it could also be $700. If it is, I ain't getting that spring, all right? Come back a little bit, oh, sorry. Like I said, I'm gonna keep jumping forward. Your um, vents in the middle, they've got swing, a little swing mode. That's actually really nice because if you're cruising along, you want a cool air, you want a warm air, whatever it may be, you don't want that blasting in your face like consistently. I don't know about you, but that kind of bugs me. Uh, or not bugs me, but it can get annoying. But if it's just kind of like oscillating, it's pretty good. So you do have that option. Um, I never use it actually because to be honest with you, I usually have my windows down and the Tootsie heater on, even if it's really cold. I like fresh air coming in, but I like to be nice and warm. So seat heater, foot heater, put the windows down a little bit, fresh air coming in, maybe even the sunroof open. Yeah, I'm weird, but I just like that. Uh, so I don't really use them because I generally don't have air coming out the top. It's all at the bottom and then fresh in. Anyway, let's carry on. Uh, as you go further back, you do have um, some vents down here, just like there 
in between the seats, like a lot of cars do, which is all well and good. But the cool thing is about the back, apart from the fact that you do have extra lights in the back, um, and you, give me two seconds, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, you got vents at the top as well, which is a really nice feature. Um, air vents for like your face. Uh, I think you've got them on the side as, yeah, you do, you got them on the side as well, which is really good. You can tell I don't spend a lot of time in the back, but for your passengers, really comfy. Also, the uh, well, the seats are obviously electric. I, I didn't touch on that, but at this level of car, you assume they are, but they are. They go forward, they go back, they go up, they go down, and even the, like, the bolstering in the back, you've got an extra little button that pushes the center of the seat out or in, so you can have like, it kind of like extends the bolstering by pulling the back in, or decreases it by pushing the back kind of towards your, pushes you out of the seat, essentially really nice feature really nice because you can just kind of sink that bit further back into your seat uh, with them being automatic on the passenger seat you've actually got right there where I just touched uh, two buttons and it's a slide forward and back or lean forward and back so you're you know driving around some VIP high-flying executive you can actually do it without looking like a goober reaching over like oh trying to you know get down the side of the seat, it's right here and it's really accessible, so that's quite nice. So if you were using this as like a chauffeur car, uh, that kind of, which I think that's kind of semi what they're like made for in Japan, um, but yeah. Oh, my rims are hating me today. Um, yeah, sorry, got distracted because that's gonna cost me a lot of money if I hit a big one. If you are driving people around, it is very nice. Now going back a little bit further for those passengers in the back, back seats, they are automatic, they lean back, they lean forward a little bit. Not a great deal, but like a few inches, and you know, a few inches count. Um, so you've got that. They actually are both heated in the back as well, which is nice. Again, not cooled, just heated. So it's got that element underneath and in the back that heats up nicely. Um, and it kind of, I don't, like, I don't know what temperature it goes to because I would have to literally rip apart a seat um, to do that, and I'm not doing that. But it gets nice and warm. Warm enough that it's not uncomfortable, um, but also warm, oh, sorry, cool enough that it's not uncomfortable, but warm enough that it is, you know, noticed and cozy, right? In the, set, in the back as well, you also have um, the sunshade control, which is very nice. So if you're in the back and you don't want that sun beating down on you, I know it sounds a little bit silly because you guys can probably see through the back and it has the um, privacy tint you know, on my one. Back windows and the back rear side windows are like pretty much blacked out. But if you didn't have that, you can put the shade up. Also on the door um, trims here, they have a shade that you can just lift up and click in as well on the back window. So you can get really private back there um, if you are getting chauffeured around, which is really cool. Now, the controls, you can control the music, volume, skip tracks, you can, oh, what was it? Uh, you can lean your seats forward and back, you can turn your heater on, uh, you've got a fridge in the back as well, and then you've got the blind. I'm pretty sure that's it. Like you can like obviously change radio stations and stuff, but um, unless you have the extender, which I don't, uh, I don't listen to the radio, um, it's not gonna matter. But if you do, you can do that. So that's really cool as well. So it's as much as like, it's a really nice car to drive. It's also a really nice car to be driven in. Um, I don't get to because I don't like people driving my cars. It freaks me out, so I can't relax. Uh, even if it's like my missus or even if it was a really good driver, I freak out because I just get paranoid and anxious that someone's gonna, I don't know, scratch a rim or whatever. The thing is, I can possibly do that, obviously. I'm not perfect. But if I do it, I blame me. And I'm like, ah, damn, I'm an idiot. I made a mistake. But if someone else does it, I kind of hate that person. And I don't want to hate people. So I just don't like people driving my cars ever. Um, so if anyone out there has ever driven one of my cars, you are very, very special. Uh, no one does that. So you're welcome. Um, look, apart from that, you've also, you've got like little things like uh, additional things you can put in, like the VIP table. I love the VIP table. The VIP table gets more attention than almost anything, than the rims and the exhaust and the whatever, because my front windows aren't very tinted. They're like legally tinted, which is like nothing. Um, what, 35 grade or something? But obviously you can see that. Now, people have asked me, oh, what's the go with the airbags? You, you know, would it blow that in someone's face? Now the airbags are actually located one above and one below. So in an accident, they would actually kind of engulf that 
our VIP table, which is really cool because it means they haven't made a mod that's just going to be stupid. You know what I mean? Um, you would still be safe due to airbags. But disclaimer, I'm putting the disclaimer, don't put a VIP table in your car, okay? Because if you have an accident and you get hurt, you're going to be like, oh, Adam told me. No, no. It's up to you if you want to put a big solid piece of wood in front of you, in between you and the dash. Like... I almost never have passengers, to be honest. If I have a passenger, like if me and the missus go somewhere, we usually take her car. This is generally just being driven by me, but I feel comfortable that, you know, my passenger would be okay, uh, but I don't feel comfortable that yours would. So, disclaimer, don't come back at me. Little things like, you've also got the rear view mirror. Um, it does clip up and down, but if someone is behind you with their high beams on or whatever, it dims itself. Uh, which is really cool. So it's got like a sensor in it and it senses obviously super bright lights behind you and it will actually like tint that light so you don't get blinded. Your side ones don't, so you've kind of got to wear that. But yeah, your, your top one does, which is really good because there's so many people like in big four wheel drives and stuff that don't realign their headlights when they jack the car up or whatever it may be. Or maybe they're just inconsiderate and they're driving along with their high beams on. You know what I mean? Like. What are you gonna do? Hold a bit of paper out being like, you got your high beams on. No one cares, they won't turn them. But that's probably, that's probably all of the features that you use on the reg. Um, just trying to think. Yeah, that's kind of everything that you use, everything that's kind of, you know, useful and readily there. Now, if you go through the list of things that this car has uh, X, Y, and Z, I can guarantee you that there's probably a handful of things that I use that I haven't said in this video. So if you have one of these and I haven't listed what you use, jump in the comments and be like, oi, what about this? Because I use that. Because like, you know, you've got some buttons underneath here that cut off the, I think it's they cut off the um, fob key. So you have to like come and unlock it with, a, with your actual key. Uh, you have a button that undoes the automatic boot release because you have the automatic boot release on this door handle um, which I didn't talk about because obviously I'm jumping around trying to remember them all um, I don't I want to be organic with you I don't want to just write like read off a list because that's boring it's way more fun watching me trying to remember things I think uh, yeah you have a button that actually cancels that automatic release so for example if you're in a dodgy area and you don't want people to get your boot I don't know like Maybe you get worried that you're gonna press the button in your pocket or something and it's gonna open while you're walking away. I don't know, I really don't know. Um, wait, side note, if you have a 186 and your boot lid opens automatically by itself with the automatic button, jump in the comments because I feel like that's as rare as a JZA 80 Supra still have in the airbox. I mean, maybe not so much the airbox nowadays because everyone's just like buying them, refurbing them to factory and then selling them for a million dollars, but whatever. Um, but yeah, most of the people I've spoken to, the motor in the actual boot doesn't fully open it. It kind of struggles. Um, and I've gone to look at replacing it, but I think it's like $700 or $1,200. And to be honest with you, I have much better things that I could spend seven to $1,200 on than an automatically opening boot. Uh, so it doesn't really bother me. But if yours automatically opens, like with no issues, like you just press it and it's like, nice. You know, like that'd be that'd be sweet, but a little bit too much to fix for mine. Can't be bothered. I'm happy for it to be just there. It's a hella heavy boot, so that's why the motor kind of dies. But yeah, the two buttons under here. So you've got the one that turns off the fob key, and then the other one. I think it's for calibrating the uh, wheel pressure sensors because you do have them now. They're not the same as the one I installed. You guys have probably seen, I've got an aftermarket one that shows me the pressures at all times, like a lot of new cars actually have. Um, this one is not like that. So I actually got confused and I got it explained to me by someone that did know. It works with your overall rolling diameter of your wheel. So if you go and put some wheels on and you put tires on that are too far different front and back, apparently your ABS picks up the difference and says that you've got a flat. So it's gonna probably say you've either got a flat on both your fronts and both your rears, um, if they're different. So you've got to keep the overall rolling diameter the same, which is hard when you're running staggered wheels, but you've got to do your calculations, make sure your tires are the right size. I know you're thinking like, well, I got 20s in the front, 20s in the back. Nah, it doesn't matter. It's your tires, because if you've got like a 
355 in the back and you've got a 255 in the front and you're running 40 sidewalls, remember the 40 is a percentage of the width. So that means that your rears are gonna be way taller than your fronts, not gonna work. You're gonna have to run like, I don't know, 25s in the back if you run 355s. But if you run 355s, I mean, damn, that's impressive. That's a big wheel. So be aware, that will happen. So uh, if you're running a square set, not an issue because you run the same tires front back all good no dramas but it means that you actually don't have a sensor in your wheel uh, or on your wheel you know it's not your valve cap it's not in the in the wheel itself which is good for when you want to go aftermarket you're not one of these guys which is pretty much every car from like 2002 upwards that have tire pressure sensors rolling around with aftermarket wheels and they've got a, a little alarm on their dash bro pull the led out stop driving with warning lights on your dash pull the led out and if you're going to sell the car just go and pop it back in how hard is it or put your sensors in pull them out of the old wheels put them in the new ones bro way better like why lose a feature just to run oh i was really gonna burn a kind of wheel there but you guys know me i try not to be negative so i'm just gonna you guys can guess which wheel i hate that everyone froths over and spends way too much money on but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do it but yeah, that kind of covers what you use every day. Uh, the features that you will get in and be like, oh man, I'm glad I've got that. Oh, I'm glad I've got that. I never actually jump in this car and wish, oh, I wish I had that feature. I mean, cool seats would be all right, but to be honest, I live in Melbourne, so not really a big deal. Um, like how often do I need cooled seats? I'm in one of the coldest states in Australia. I'm sweet, don't worry about it. But if you're in Perth or something, uh, or in the Northern Territory, you can totally understand why cooled seats would be choice as for you, because it is warm over there. Um, so it'd be really nice. You guys have that beautiful blue sky 24 seven, jerks. <laughs> nah, but guys, so that's touching on all the features. I have had someone ask me about it, um, cover what features it has. Like I said, I could just rattle off a list, but that's no fun. It's way more fun to see me get confused but it also gives you a bit more uh, insight as to, did I say it's got a reverse camera? It's got a reverse camera, you know? Um, into what you actually use. I know there's a lot of cars that have a bucket load of functions and you don't even use 80% of them, but you paid all the money for it. This one, I feel you use all the ones that you have. Um, but yeah, write in the comments, if you, okay, if you really want to be that like negative Nelly, that is like, you missed out on this one, oh my God. Go grab a list of the features and all the ones that I didn't do, you can, you're more than welcome to jump in and be that guy. Um, I like comments, comments help the channel. And if you wanna drop that comment, it's hilarious because everyone else will see the comment and be like, ha, that guy actually did that, that's pathetic. Um, but that's it for today's video, guys. Touching on all the features of this beautiful car. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys do have some extra ones that you're like, oh, actually, I use this one all the time. That'd be sick. Um, and tell me if your top model has some things. And also, if you've got the like Type A, the lower model, um, tell me what you don't have. Come on and be like, oh man, I wish I had X, Y, and Z off of the, the C-Type because they're really cool. You can probably retrofit them, to be honest. Like, I'm, I, I can't see why you wouldn't be able to. But guys, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like, please subscribe, please jump in the comments, have a bit of fun. And I'll see you in the next one. See you guys.